So Brussels is uh, the heart of Belgium, the heart of Europe, as you know, the seat of the European Union, NATO. We are 1.2 million people. Every day, 400,000 commuters are coming into Brussels. If you take into account all the civil servants who are coming to this place, the people without papers, the illegals, we will probably have 1.7 million people living, uh, being present during daytime uh, in uh, this city. Some basic mobility facts, one out of two of the people living in this city don't own a car, which is uh, very surprisingly, if you walk around to the city, you will see all these cars, I will come back to that later, and more than half of all the movements that are being done in the city is for a distance of less than five kilometers, and four percent only of them are doing bond by bike. You know, we are capital of many things here, uh, but we are definitely not the capital of uh, the bikes, and uh, that will come someday. We have a mobility problem in Brussels, and we don't have to uh, deny that. And why do we have a mobility problem? Is that every day we have 400,000 commuters coming into the city, 235,000 of them choose to do that every day, individually, by their own car. They are the traffic jam. And sometimes I have a feeling to be there on the streets, you are the traffic jam. Huh? Because we didn't take a degree that we have traffic jams. Why is that happening? Because then you have to ask the question, why do the people do that? First of all, Belgium is a very small country. It takes only one hour to be in France, in Germany, in the Netherlands, and on Luxembourg, very small part of it. Uh, but, um, you know, it's only one hour. Then secondly, you know, we are a federal country, complicated, but uh, we have federal fiscal policy for the last 100 years that is stimulating living on the countryside. It's much cheaper to live there. Uh, all the tax systems, it's much cheaper to live on the countryside than living in a city, which is completely nuts because, you know, from a solidarity and community point of view, living in a city is much less expensive for the collectivity. But our federal system, it just gives uh, people to go and live on the countryside. Secondly, in Belgium, we have a system of uh, uh, company cars. You know, normally in the world, only senior, senior, senior management will get a company card. In Belgium, junior, junior, junior management will get a company car too. And it's not only a car, they will give you also a car to get free gasoline. So, of course, all these people are using their cars. And they say, why do we have so many traffic jams? But just giving, uh, as a way of salary, cars to people. Again, federal policy. Thirdly, you know, I don't know, you know Berlin, you know Paris, they have these Asban RER, uh, we call it, you know, the Réseau Express Railways. I call it nowadays Réseau Éternellement Retardé. Because in Belgium, we are for 20, 30 years talking that we are going to get a wow, wonderful railway system around uh, Brussels. And we absolutely need it, because this slide will show you where all the commuters live. And you know, in the middle, that dark point, that's Brussels. And you know, all around, that's our other, that's Flanders region, that's the Flemish region, that's Wallonia. So if we just had the railway system, it would be wonderful. And you know what? 80% of the infrastructure is there. The only thing that is missing is trains, and now we're hoping for my colleague, Mr. Bellot, which we are having a very constructive dialogue, that very soon we will decide that we finally will have the trains so that we can people commute to Brussels by a train. Once again, it used to be Brussels. That's only 20, 30 years ago. You see the Grand Place with cars. You see all these flyovers. Uh, you see, you know, cars everywhere in the past. And that's because, well, the slide doesn't work really well. Uh, we are, uh, since the 58, that period after the war, Belgium made the country by having a lots of car industry. All the car plants are nearly gone to state. All the rest is gone. But we decided that a modern city was a car-orientated city. And we opened the city for the cars. And we became a city for cars. And of course, if you become a city for cars, you will have a lot of cars. And we'll have lots of traffic jams. And um, that makes also a weak city government that was present here uh, in uh, the city made that we are having so many cars. But of course, as you can notice, the city was not designed initially to having all these cars. That's Brussels today. And we took actually the same pictures as you saw earlier. It's getting nicer, isn't it? And that's because we're not getting rid of the cars, but we're saying you will get less space in this city. Because, and I'm coming back to that later, we want that Brussels become a city for cars to a city for people. You know, we are working for a better Brussels. And a better Brussels means we want quality of life, we want less cars, we're not against the cars, but we have to give the public space back to the people, for people for biking, people for walking, to have squares that are with much less uh, cars. And for the 
first time in the history of Brussels we are actually doing it and we are actually convincing people of doing it. I demolished the flyover at Reyes. I don't know if you know it, some part in the city we had a flyover. You know, if I said that 10 years ago, they would have locked me up in a lunatic house and they would say, what the hell is he doing? Huh? You know, and 12 years ago, see Alain Flans here will remember, people said to me, go back to Flanders with your bike, you know? because I was promoting biking policy, and here in Brussels they said biking, that's something Flemish, you know? That's something Nordic, and we don't like that. But nowadays, you see that people are biking uh, much more. It's all in the head of eyes, of the head of the people, and mentality, and we are having this uh, mentality shift because people are understanding that uh, quality of life is important. How are we going to do that? We are going to invest 5.2 billion euros the next 10 years. It's scheduled, it's uh, budgeted, we have the money, it's financed, the programs are running. We are going to build, uh, actually we are starting now, uh, to build a new uh, subway line. We are, going, we are building two new tram lines, we are actually doing it today. Uh, we uh, have a new bus plan, uh, we, are building new, we are going to buy new trams, new buses. Uh, we are doing a lot of stuff in the public transport. 5.2 billion euros the next 10 years, and it's all there. It's not blah, blah, blah. It's there, and it's being executed uh, right now. Secondly, I already told you, we are not the capital of biking. We absolutely have to become the capital of biking. We are 4% of us now. Unfortunately, Fortunately, how you look at it, but after the attacks, more people started to bike in Brussels. So if you go around to the city now, you will see much more people on their bike, which is good. We're now building a cycling network of 80 kilometers around the city. And within uh, one month, I will present a revolutionary plan for Brussels around La Petite Centure, you know, and with everywhere, the cars. We will put there lots of bike lanes separated, protected. People will be back there and life will come back uh, at that uh, part of the city. Uh, it will not be Vienna yet, but uh, we will go in, in a way to that. So 80 kilometers will be there. We are building parkings for 2020, 8,500 parkings connect, connected with the subway and the um, high developed tramway lines. Uh, that is uh, the process going on, the permits are being uh, um, introduced now. So uh, for 2020, 8,500 extra plans. So we have a new vision for the city, it's all about people. You know the Chaussée d'Ixelles, probably you know it, all these cars, terrible to do your shopping, it will be get pedestrianized in 2019 and we are actually drawing the plans uh, today. Then Schumann, your square. You know Schumann Square is the most filmed square in the world. Lots of international television crew, and it's the most ugliest place in the world. Nobody wants to eat his centrises over there. Nobody wants to have a date with his girl or boyfriend over there. Or you have to be a little bit sick. Huh? Or you want to enter a relationship, maybe. But that's not what one should do. And so we want to uh, pedestrianize all that zone over there, semi-pedestrianize. We were nearly there, and then some people in the commission got nervous because they say, oh, la, 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 we will be three minutes more in our car. Huh? Actually, it's like that, three minutes more in the car. Some people, not all people. So um, we launched an international competition uh, now. It's, uh, it's uh, very soon going to be uh, attributed to five architect teams, and we want in 2019 that this will become a real meeting point during day, during night. We have a light scheme there during night, so people can come, Tourists can take photographs, and you, civil servants working here in the European Union Quarter, finally you can be proud on the square you are living, and where everybody talks about, but nobody wants to be. So, ladies and gentlemen, in your European capital, because for those of you who are not living in Brussels, or an, uh, another uh, member of the European Union, it's your capital too. As you can see, we are changing. We are finally from the bad cat in class getting to the better cat in class, and we are giving public space back to the people by uh, doing finally what many other cities have done, is uh, making a city uh, of course to a city of people. And so the paradigm shift is uh, on. There's still a lot of work to do, I'm quite aware of that, and I'm counting a few people, and I will end with that, who are living in the European Union uh, too, because I don't know if you know, but people working in the European Union institution, many of them go by bike, many uh, of them uh, use public transport, and we are doing some research on it, and a, bit, a little bizarre, the ones who live the closest to the European Union institutions take the car, and those who live further on are not taking the car. So you are an example for us, keep getting pressure, and then we can finally make of this wonderful city a city of people. Thank you.